Hey again, folks. Rick from the Boondocking Bears. Well, I'm on the road again, and I'm on my way to Camp Out RV in Stratford, Ontario. They are experts in slide-in truck campers, and that's what I want to check out today. So as I've said in a previous video, I think uh, I, truck camper is the way for Little Bear and I to travel. We can get out on the road for three or four months, be home for a month and go out on the road again, and I think that's perfect. But I want to try and keep it to a half ton pickup. Now I know smaller than that, like the Ford Rangers and the Toyota Tacomas, they're just a little too small. Even a half ton uh, apparently is a little small, but it can be done. And the pros that know that would be the people at Camp Out RV. I'd like to keep it to a half ton simply because it's better fuel economy. They're easier to fix. I've had them before. Uh, but it means that you have to have probably a lighter and smaller slide in camper. So I'm going up to Camp Out to check out trucks. Uh, they don't have trucks, but they'll know the specs on what truck I should have, or if this is the truck I have, like an F-150, what camper would go in it? And I gather they're supposed to be the lighter ones. So I gather some of the lighter slide-in tr truck campers that would fit onto an F-150 uh, don't have a bathroom. Now, for Little Bear and I, that's not a big deal. I mean, Little Bear prefers to go outside, and for me, it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of portable composting, various uh, toilets that you can carry with you. Uh, that works for me. Now, if it was a couple, meh, I'm not too sure. But seeing as it's just Little Bear and I, and I want to keep it to an F-150, we'll go with these light sliding campers. And if it means giving up a bathroom, it's not the end of the world. So that's the second reason I want to go there, is just to walk through, get a general feel for these things and the features and and the size and would I fit and as I say three or four months on the road is this going to be comfortable and of course I want to tow my bike as well and that has to come with me. And then the third reason is the sleeping is generally on the bed over the the, the cab over part and obviously it's a little small and I, I'm probably like most people I have a little bit of claustrophobia not bad I wouldn't call it terrible uh, but I want to make sure I can climb up in there and see if it actually works for me. Now, I know Little Bear will love it. Uh, this is a bad visual, but he and I like to sleep bum to bum. <laughs> and that's just the way it is. So he'll be fine. I just want to make sure I am. So those are the three things I want to accomplish. I got a couple hour drive ahead of me, and I'll check in with you when I got something to report. So isn't that just how it works sometimes? I checked the forecast, made the drive, ready to tour, learn about, and film sliding campers and what happens. The skies open up, the rain comes down with vengeance, and it's kind of a washout. So apologies for the brief original footage here. However, on the bright side, the good folks at Camp Out RV invited me to use some of their footage to show the camper they recommended, given my criteria, and it's the Palomino Backpack HS650. Now, my focus was to research on a rig using a properly equipped in-specs half-ton pickup like the Ford F-150. The options I wanted are power jacks and awning and air conditioning. And at a dry weight of around 1,600 pounds, it was light enough for a half-ton extended or crew cab, 4x4, 5.5 or 6.5 foot short box pickup to handle. Now, at one point, I did get inside and flop around on the bed and discovered no claustrophobia issues at all, so that was really good. I also got a chance to sit on the bench that is used as the dinette. All of the smaller campers use some form of this configuration, and I discovered they are extremely uncomfortable, and that raised a red flag, especially if I take this on the road for several months at a time. So you'll notice Two, there is no bathroom, and again, that is a feature of the lightweight truck campers. Now, I can get a portable potty, and there is an outside shower, but for simple washing up or shaving, that can be done inside, so no issues there at all. I expected this beforehand. So now, the things I didn't like about the camper. First off, it is very small inside, a little smaller than I expected. 
The second was the dinette area. It was just very uncomfortable to sit at. The bench was too shallow and the whole thing just too small. Another disadvantage was there was very little storage and though I expected limited storage, this was more extreme than I thought going in. Now with an extended or crew cab pickup truck, I can use the back seat for storage and then the lack of storage in the camper, I don't think that's a deal breaker. Otherwise, the camper was pretty cool and practical. So a couple of days have passed since my visit to Camp Out RV and I've been doing a lot of thinking about the truck camper rig combo for me. Now I went down to the local Ford dealership here in Niagara Falls and discovered that the F-150s require the payload package option and upgraded tires in order to carry a truck camper. Now used, these are not the easiest trucks to find. So then I subsequently spent hours and hours online looking for used lightweight campers and used F-150s properly equipped and discovered a couple of things. First off was the realization that I was selling myself short. My incessant need to find the perfect combination of rig for comfort, practicality, fuel economy and price was not doing me any favors and in fact was becoming a liability and perhaps leading me into a bad decision. So the reality is that I'm going to be 65 in less than two years and want to use the camper to live in for months at a time, particularly during the harsh winter months here in Canada, when I'll head south to Florida, Texas, Arizona, California, wherever. And as long as Little Bear and I are safe and comfortable and can pull my scooter, I'm good. So cost and getting the perfect rig isn't as important as those things. So then why the hell am I scrimping and sacrificing comfort when I'll be in the rig for extended periods? Then through a little online research it became apparent that a good condition slightly used lightweight camper is hard to find, meaning I'm going to pay either for a new unit or close to new price for a used tiny unit. So it begs the question, why not just go bigger? The heavier 2,000 to 3,300 pound lightly used campers are a dime a dozen and I can buy them either in Canada or the US since they don't need licensing. So why not just screw the half ton truck and go either with a three quarter or even a one ton truck and be done with it. And by the time I pay a premium for a lightweight camper, I can get a bigger, less expensive one and have a more powerful truck that I know will handle any conditions I find. And it is very likely I will probably spend close to the same amount of money as the half ton option. A three quarter or one ton four by four with an extended cab gas engine because I won't be climbing mountains that often works for me. I'm not worried about fuel economy because most of my trips will result in stays of a week or two before moving on and I'm not using the truck while camped. I'll use the scooter to shop locally to see the sights, ride the twisties, head to the beach or go and visit friends while maintaining my base camp. This makes far more sense to me. An F-250 or F-350 extended cab gasser, six and a half or eight foot box and a 2,500 to 3,500 pound full size sliding camper will give me everything I want in comfort with the flexibility to get off grid and out in the boonies where I love to be. And by the way, I use Ford as an example only because I've owned them and I know them, but whether it's a GMC or Dodge makes no difference to me. Whatever's available at the time is what I'll go with. Then to finish off the rig, I'll just add a single rail motorcycle carrier to tow the bike and I'm done and dusted. That's it, c'est tout, finito. So now, I just have to wait for the lawsuit to end, then hit the road with Little Bear and Traveler. Oh, I might have forgot to mention before. The horse General Robert E. Lee rode was named Traveler and with my passion, for studying the American Civil War, it seemed appropriate that Traveler should be the scooter's name. So there you go. I'm so ready to get on the road and begin this new phase of my life, and it will happen soon. So now, comment as you see fit, subscribe, like, share, and smile. Enjoy, have fun, be charitable, and thanks for watching.